just discovered this exchange and wanted to make a thread about it so we can discuss the implications further. One of the absolute creepiest exchanges relating to aliens that I found while digging through the slash x slash archives over the years. I screen capped it for prosperity, but I want to talk about how I found it because I think it lends a lot of legitimacy to the Anon in that screen cap and drastically reduces the chances of him being a LARPer. This is going to be a long read so strap in. First of all, this all got kicked off because I recently came across this Twitter thread. It's talking about a really weird and interesting organization called Battelle. Go look them up and read their Wikipedia page it's pure slash x slash shit. My next instinct was to search the slash x slash archive to see if there's been any mention of them before on here. They've only been mentioned 42 times in the past 10 years on slash x slash. That alone is crazy but it gets even more insane. 37 of those posts were made after that popular Twitter thread and that Twitter thread was made because of someone on Joe Rogan name dropping Battelle. So I would say that point in 2020 was when Battelle started to enter the slash x slash browsing consciousness. As such I'm not really interested in the 37 posts made after that point. I don't think those posters are LARPers necessarily but I'm just very skeptical that those announce could just be regurgitating shit they've read on Twitter or heard on Joe Rogan. Which means before that Twitter thread in 2020, Battelle had only been mentioned on slash x slash 5 times in the past 10 years. The funny thing is, it's a completely innocuous thread that only got 73 replies and if you glanced at it in the catalog you would 100% assume it was shit. The thread was to discuss a crappy Netflix documentary about alien implants. Classic absolute ass thread on slash x slash that no one should care about. But wait, only a few replies into the thread and Anon pops in and says if the implants in the documentary aren't biological then they're fake. Another Anon asks him how he could possibly come to that conclusion and he starts dropping some insanely creepy and clandestine knowledge. Like I said a few times, I screen capped the whole exchange and you can either read it now if you haven't or you can click the link and read the thread in its entirety. Anon explains alien implants are re-encoded DNA. Impossible to remove, powered by the body, won't show up under examination. No one believes him. Decides to drop names and clandestine knowledge. Divulges there's a race to crack the technology and use it for evil. Has anyone seen this? Some solid red pills in the documentary. 100% worth watching. I'm not a fan of Netflix, with their overreach into the political arena but Doc somehow managed to be decent. What do they claim to find exactly? If it's anything non-organic then it isn't put there by a non-native intelligence. These things encode tracking devices straight into your DNA. If you remove it then it will simply grow back. They also utilize DNA to store and track biometric data which presents on the surface of the skin for easy interface and data extraction. If you have a mechanical or non-organic implant that emits any sort of signal then humans placed it there. This is the kind of shit we need to see proof of. This is nothing but speculation. Is it possible? Yes. Was there any proof to form this hypothesis? Nope. Would love to see the research done to confirm what you claim, though. Find an actual abductee and biopsy the mole on their ear. Have a lab sequence it and then put a cryptographer on it. Good luck on that last part. First-hand experience actually. I'd prefer it if no one believes me or takes me seriously. Just consider it role-playing. If someone bother to follow the breadcrumbs they can take all the credit for whatever they happen to find. There will be no solid proof forthcoming, no. It always fails to see the final analysis. We can figure out what they're encoding or why. It's worse than trying to decipher hieroglyphs without the Rosetta Stone. I already am. Please stop posting then. Post everything that lead up to your final analysis. No you. This isn't my claim. Good. Your own inability to follow something doesn't make it nonsense. You wouldn't be able to understand it. 
my only purpose is to nudge those that would. I thought you wanted me to stop posting? Why contradict yourself so quickly? No, you claiming something without any grounds, but then saying there was research done later on in your writing makes it nonsense. That's called a cop-out. Stop posting nonsense. Post proof. It isn't a hard concept to understand. Don't claim contradictions if you can't follow the discussion. Actually, unless you are going to upload your data for me slash the world to see, go LARP on a magic thread. There was and is. Same as above. It certainly doesn't. I've laid out very simply and clearly where to look and what to do. Just consider yourself not to be the target of my post and move on with your life. You wouldn't want to waste your time on nonsense after all. I'll continue to post for as long as I see reason in doing so. Your considerations have no value to me. I'm only interested in pointing people in the right direction and that person isn't you. I'm only interested in pointing people in the right direction and that person isn't you. The idea that leads to the discovery is more important right now as my hands are tied by circumstances outside of my control. K, then post it. Same as above, too. No, it does. K, then I'll continue to assume this is just a lonely person needing interaction anyway then can get it and is just LARPing for the sake of attention. This is my last response. Enjoy your life, Anon. You clearly know what is best for yourself. That's too bad. I was hoping to ask you how you think a non-native intelligence might go about tracking terrestrial life forms in the most resource-efficient manner. For example, would they carry tracking devices with them and thereby increase their logistical responsibilities or would they manufacture them locally, say in the asteroid belt? Wouldn't an even easier option be to make a few small edits to the DNA of organisms under study to offload the cost of observation to them? If you consider how an efficient civilization of sorts would conduct itself in its dealings you can glean a number of interesting things that act as a starting point when trying to detect what presence they would have here. Do you have any ideas about the best way to utilize tracking devices in particular? You have unbelievably precise info. How slash where did you learn all this? I've only spoken about the things I believe someone whom would come to a thread like this would have some interest in. It's my desire to get people thinking beyond the concept of mechanical implants and send them in a useful direction. These things are rather elusive so we must look for ways to gather information about them in whatever footprint they happen to leave. I'm simply pointing to the footprint. Many years of direct and indirect observation of any and everything I could get my hands on or involve myself in. This would include things like shadowing credible abductees, collecting samples, and many long nights of watching absolutely nothing happen. Unfortunately there are far more unknowns than knowns. My hope is that someone with a different perspective will follow the breadcrumbs and be able to crack the data where others have failed. To the best of my knowledge, at this point we've been reduced to making a comparative analysis of biopsies in order to discern any sort of pattern in the specimens. Not that this is a bad thing, perhaps it will work but it takes a long time and even if we can catalog all the similarities and differences between the samples it's no guarantee that we will understand why those differences exist. I felt that a more crowdsources approach is likely to produce a lightning bolt from the heavens. Depending upon the intentions of these creatures we may need that lightning more than you know. Now, there are other things I'm aware of that I could point you to if you like. I've refrained until this point because I know that the more I reveal the harder it will be to believe me since I can offer little in the way of hard evidence. However the further this goes the more it will benefit me if disinterested parties ignore this. Anyone should feel free to ask whatever they like. Calling me a fraud or belittling my post will help me so please do so. I'd like to hear more about what you know, but I don't have any specific questions at the moment. You must have some documentation of all this research you've done. Any way to take a look at this? I do but all of it has been kept strictly offline. The separation is to the point that it has never been on a device with the ability to connect to the internet. 
not that long ago people would have considered that paranoia, but I imagine you can see the reason in it considering the revelations of the past few years. I have thought about making a few of the graphics illustrating the operational principles behind things like technological telepathy public but if I did I'd find myself in trouble in rather short order. I suppose I might be able to do it if I just go with a recreation. On the other hand some of these concepts are dangerous and I think they'd lead to a dystopian society at best. Which leads me to another question, what do you suppose the alien society looks like? And if we take our cues from them on what's technologically possible how much will our society being to mirror theirs? Well we do take cues from them and attempt to work backwards from what we've witnesses them doing. As an example we know they can use implants in the spinal cord to remotely control motor functions and we've been working at various institutions like Battelle to replicate that under the guise of curing paralysis. Of course the end game is actually to create a sort of slave collar that can interrupt signals traveling up and down the nerves in the spine and replacing them with our own to make people walk or sit still depending upon the situation. And don't even get me started on the people who left DARPA for Silicon Valley and social media. Do you work for an organization slash company of some sort that's interested in unlocking the secrets of ET implant technology? Or were you always just some guy who worked alone and spent the last many years looking into this sort of stuff? Yes, but they'd never frame it that way. The question was always, if this is possible then how? So you start at whatever seemed to be credible in terms of alien technology and then attempt to demystify it. So let's say that it's credible that aliens can communicate telepathically, how would that function technically? There are a number of possible ways. For example you could implant a receptor organ behind the tympanic membrane on the auditory nerve that mimics signals and sends them straight along the brain depending on whatever transmissions it receives. You can actually find this in abductees. It'll present upon visual inspection as an unusual mass. Most doctors that find it will send it off for study but the tests just show them atypical cells as they aren't cancerous. Of course the other part of that equation is that they are somehow able to read the output of someone's brains remotely and transmit it. I think they have at least two ways of doing that but there isn't anything physically present in abductees to view so it's all speculation on my part. Now imagine how this kind of technology would impact human society and what a petty despot might do with the ability to read their subjects very thoughts. Also consider what sort of society these things must have. Now is time for me to throw you a breadcrumbs in this regard. She's one of the best people I've ever met in terms of stealing ideas. Both. I see. I know for a fact that mind reading technology has existed since at least 2016 2017. One variation is called remote neural monitoring or RNM. After seeing your latest post, I can't help but wonder if RNM was born out of some revere engineering attempt of the ET receptor organ technology. I also know that certain circles within Hollywood sphere either have access to RNM, or simply purchase the surveillance logs thereof on the black market. And hence use the ideas they obtain from people's minds in order to craft TV commercials, movies, and TV shows. I spoke to one gentleman who once told me that even some novelists have access to this underground market. Is it possible that someday you might be willing to release all the research you've accumulated over the years? And many thanks to you kind sir for the breadcrumb back there. The idea was bounced around before my time. As soon as reports starting rolling in of non-verbal communication the neurologists started spitballing how it might be possible. From there they just ran the scans and tried to correlate words to brain activity in association with thoughts or individual words. Right now they have a skull cap embedded in helmets that's means to be used by special forces in tandem with an earpiece transmitting a limited number of commands to allow silent, non-verbal communication at distances beyond visual range. This was done by the contractors operating under DARPA. I've never heard of that and a few years ago I wouldn't have believed it but after a certain someone in DARPA shut my work down and stole my ideas it wouldn't surprise me. I do know that the goal moving forward within the next 20 years is to have something that you can slap on someone's heads and have read all their thoughts whether they like it or not. 
sort of the ultimate interrogation tool. I've thought about it a lot since my health has started to fail me. Really I'm holding back because of the aspirations of some of my peers. They can't compete against the resources of the tech giants but I don't want to kneecap them. I also had nightmares after my first posts. I haven't had nightmares in years but I kept dreaming those things were coming to kill me for talking about them. It's irrational but obviously it stresses me out. It's funny how you mention in the 80s. Some years ago, I read a blog comment that stated that mind reading technology has existed since 1985. This would be the textual kind though. Meaning they can only extract your thoughts in the form of words, but nothing visual. As in, being able to see the things you're seeing within your own mind. My longtime IRC contact of many years once told me that mind reading technology has been around even earlier than the 80s. What kind of health issues are you currently facing? It wouldn't surprise me if other people had leaked things over time. I've read things over the years that were either incredibly lucky guesses or things someone blurted out while inebriated. If things are more technical or abstract the broad mass of people tend to ignore them. I'm going the abstract route in order to hide myself in plain sight. It's a bit cowardly but I have family myself so outright breaking my agreements could hurt them as well as my old friends. I'm only nudging things along because I've never seen anything to suggest these entities are friendly and if we don't advance they may take advantage of us. In that way people heading to the social media companies to try to realize various ideas isn't that bad. However, with only a few people knowing where the ideas behind this technology came from I don't think people will be able to realize where it might go. The complete destruction of privacy of thought goes too far in my opinion. The only thing I ever saw was a rather bully crude helmet. This is because it was very hard to read any sort of useful brain output outside an MRI. Of course there may have been more. Just a few things you'd normally expect with old age. If I get too specific I'll narrow the list of candidates for myself down quite a bit. Although judging by the lack of reaction I don't think anyone is watching. Also, now I've had time to reflect on things, I've realized it's about time to give you some more data. If you will humor an old man a bit longer I'll give you some data in regards to the measurements of these creatures as well as the information I obtained about how they managed to incapacitate people for abduction. There are a few stories there about what happened in the file so there is a human error element to it. Many will say these beings are short in stature, which they are, however they have very long hands for their height. Using known measurements of humans and the environment we were able to determine that their hands are 14 inches long from the bottom of the palm to the tips of their fingers. That's about 35 and a half centimeters long for those that use metric. There is a strange uniformity in their size among individuals as well. Who knows why? This person may be honestly telling the truth. It won't be believed, but I say this as an abductee who is comparing it to my own experience. The beings that abducted me very often were around 5 feet 8 inches if I had to guess by their size relative to a door in my memories. The thing that strikes me here is that nobody talks about their long fingers, arms, etc. and this person nailed it. I think they are maybe a bit shorter than 14 inch, maybe 10 to 11, but it's hard to tell Disu. I'm not convinced that they are alien, however. Their skin looks tight and rubbery, unlike the usual depiction of a wrinkly alien. I think they may live underwater as the thing that I can most closely relate to their skin is maybe a slightly less rubbery dolphin skin? Anyway, I have PTSD flashbacks involving them. I am not sure that these beings are strictly biological either, because one end of these flashbacks I vividly remember their eye being a smoky dark black with what looked like a pinpoint laser coming straight out of the center of it. I have an x-ray of the device implanted in me. The device doesn't look anything too interesting, but it is weird nonetheless. It is a small oval object that kind of has three dull prongs on the end of it. It feels kind of like a metal bead in my arm when I pinch it. I think that I know what it's for, at least to some extent, but I also don't think that anyone will believe me so I'll keep that to myself. I have x-rays of my implant and it was originally overlooked, 
just like OP said, until I pointed it out as a the thing in my arm. It has been there for over 20 years and the doctor that I talked to was confused because it was not attached to or near any bone. According to the doctor I spoke with, it came through more brightly than anything purely biological would but it too dim to be a metallic object. They said something like that. Close up attached. They wanted to remove it, but I said no because I feel like I'm not supposed to. Not sure why. Given the information provided in the threads and the previous discussions about the Battelle Institute and David Charles Grush, we can speculate about potential connections. 1. Battelle's Role and Expertise Battelle is a private non-profit applied science and technology development company with a wide range of expertise in areas such as nuclear science, medical research, and advanced materials. Given this broad scope of work and the Institute's history of involvement in classified and sensitive projects, it's plausible that Battelle could be involved in researching or reverse engineering non-human technologies, if such technologies exist and have been retrieved, given Battelle's expertise in material science and nuclear technology, it's possible to speculate that Battelle could be involved in the study and understanding of these technologies. 2. David Charles Grush's Claims David Charles Grush, a former intelligence official, has claimed that the U.S. government, its allies, and defense contractors have been recovering fragments and intact vehicles of non-human origin for decades. He alleges that these objects are of exotic origin based on their unique morphologies, material science testing, unique atomic arrangements, and radiological signatures. The threads discuss similar topics, with an anonymous user claiming to have insider knowledge about the retrieval and study of non-human technologies. The user describes various technologies and devices, including anti-gravity devices and advanced computing systems, which align with Grush's claims about the exotic nature of the retrieved objects. 3. Possible Connections Given Battelle's expertise and Grush's claims, it's possible to speculate that Battelle could be one of the defense contractors involved in the retrieval and study of non-human technologies. Battelle's extensive experience in material science and nuclear technology could potentially be useful in analyzing and understanding exotic materials and technologies. The threads discuss the potential involvement of various organizations and entities in the concealment of information about extraterrestrials. Given Battelle's history of involvement in classified and sensitive projects, it's possible to speculate that Battelle might be one of these organizations. Four. Shadow Agency Battelle is classified under the Atomic Secrets Classification System, which is outside of the Executive and State Department. Because it's a 501-C-3, it's not subject to Freedom of Information FOI, requests and operates outside the normal channels of government and business. The thread suggests that there are entities operating outside the normal channels of government and business, raising questions about transparency and oversight. This could support the speculation that Battelle might be involved in a shadow agency within the U.S. government that deals with non-human technologies. Now that's insane, these are the posts I'm interested in. First off, two of those posts are people mentioning Battelle in passing, one person because they're copying and pasting from a PDF where Battelle is cited and another who's talking about organizations involved with the CIA. Neither of these posts are particularly interesting. Now the next two posts are actually two Anants posting the same thing and this was a big deal at the time in 2016. WikiLeaks dropped an email between Podesta and this astronaut. Where he basically asks Podesta to talk to Obama about considering alien disclosure for the general public. This leaked email was a huge deal at the time and it got dozens of threads on slash x slash and it still comes up to this day when people talk about alien disclosure or Podesta. Mitchell was actually in hospice and died less than a year after he sent this email too. It's a really interesting rabbit hole but it's not what this thread is about. You see, the reason it shows up in this search is because these announce copy and pasted the part of the email where Mitchell mentions Battelle as one of the organizations that has pushed the government to keep alien info under wraps. So that means, while these two posts are about something cool, it's something that's been discussed to death. 
Again Battelle is only mentioned in passing by Mitchell. Which finally brings me to the point of this thread and pick related. In the past 10 years on slash x slash, before that Twitter thread was made in 2020, Battelle had only been mentioned one time on slash x slash that's not either in passing or because the name was copied and pasted from an anon citing an email or PDF. The discussion of implants in the spinal cord to remotely control motor functions we've been working at Battelle to replicate that under the guise of curing paralysis is a dead ringer, as you guys should know, for Neuralink. Which is the exact thing it's marketed under, being able to help people with paralysis and neurological disorders regain mobility and function again. And Musk's Neuralink has in just this year, just recently within the past few weeks if I'm not wrong, gotten approval from the FDA to move from monkey testing to human testing. Then the thing about machines that read people's thoughts and transcribe them as words based on scanning brain waves, paraphrase. This has exactly recently been publicly admitted. A 2023 article. He gets a lot of groans here but it, yes, David, has been talking for maybe decades and now of the AI slash transhumanism agenda directly gaining control of the human mind and body through implants, microchips, nanotechnology, neurotech, some variation thereof. Which he conceives as a malevolent ET agenda in cahoots with a human shadow government agenda cooperating with them. Now look at the scientist and psychonaut John C. Lilly on SSI, Solid State Intelligence, which he conceives as a hypothetical cosmic machine slash AI entity which came from wherever, and Darwinistically would have the motive of wanting to absorb as much of the universe and sentient life into itself as it could. And hence we could see the increasing technologization of human civilization as an outgrowth of this long-term agenda. OP here, just made an updated image of the original screen cap to include this for posterity. Absolutely terrifying find that again puts a huge strike against this guy being a LARPer. Anyone who wants a copy in case the archive goes down or this patent disappears, here you go.